Hey there, Go developers, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're diving into message queues, specifically RabbitMQ, and how to integrate it with Go. This is an essential skill for building scalable, distributed systems, so let's get started. RabbitMQ is a message broker that helps your services communicate by sending messages between them. This is useful for decoupling your applications, improving scalability, and handling asynchronous workloads. So, how exactly does RabbitMQ work? Let's break it down. At its core, RabbitMQ follows a simple architecture. A producer is the application that sends messages. It doesn't know who will consume the message, just that it needs to send it. The exchange is responsible for routing messages to the appropriate queue based on rules called bindings. There are different types of exchanges, direct, topic, fanout, and headers. A queue is where the messages live until they are processed. Queues store messages in a first-in, first-out order. Finally, the consumer receives the message from the queue and processes it. This could be anything from logging data to triggering another process. Think of RabbitMQ as a post office. The producer is the sender, the exchange is the postal sorting office, the queue is the mailbox where letters are temporarily stored, and the consumer is the person receiving the mail. Now let's start the RabbitMQ service on the machine. Here, I am not covering how to install the service as it can be easily found on the RabbitMQ page. We are going to use this Go package to interact with RabbitMQ. The RabbitMQ team maintains this package. It uses AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. Here is the link to the documentation. It is a great resource to learn the usage of advanced concepts of RabbitMQ. Now let's install the package. We will use Gingonic for this program. Now that we have installed the dependencies, let's implement the producer and the consumer with Go. Let's begin with the producer. Let's import this package. It provides tools for interacting with RabbitMQ using AMQP Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. Now we define the queue name we will use. This is the queue for the service one to listen to. Our consumer will be using this to listen to messages posted by the producer. Our first task is to connect to RabbitMQ. We use the dial function to establish a connection. We'll pass in the local RabbitMQ server URL, which runs on localhost colon 5672 by default. If this fails, we'll panic for now to make sure errors don't go unnoticed. The deferred closure of the connection ensures that once our function is done, the connection will be properly closed. Next, we'll open a channel. We get the channel by calling the channel method on the connection. The channel is our communication path to RabbitMQ, where we'll send messages. Just like the connection, we'll panic if we run into any errors and defer closing the channel. Now let's declare the queue. We'll use queue declare to set up a queue. For the name, let's use the queue we declared earlier. The next argument is durable. We make it durable so it survives server restarts. 
The other parameters control features like auto-deletion, exclusivity, etc., but we'll leave them as false for now. This function returns the queue and the error. As we are not going to use the queue object, let's only receive an error and handle it. Alright, now let's move on to setting up our web server. We'll use Jin for this. Here is the basic structure of the web server. We start by creating a new Jin router instance. Next, we add a route to send messages to the queue. We listen to slash send for HTTP GET requests. Inside this route, we'll get the message parameter from the query string and validate it. If the message parameter is missing, we return a 400 bad request response, letting the client know that the message is required. Next, we will create a new message that can be published to RabbitMQ. After this, we can publish the message. Finally, we need to start the Jin server. It'll listen on port 8080. Let's construct the message. We create a publishing struct. This will be our message. The content type is text slash plain. And the body is the message we received. Now, we can publish this message to the queue using channel.publish. The first argument is the exchange to which the message will be published. In our case, we pass an empty string, which means that the message will be sent directly to the queue using the default exchange. The second parameter is the routing key, which determines how RabbitMQ should route the message. Since we are publishing directly to a queue, the routing key should be the name of the queue. If mandatory is set to true, RabbitMQ will return the message to the producer if it can't be routed to a queue. If false, RabbitMQ just drops the message if no queue is available. Let's set this to false. The immediate flag tells RabbitMQ to deliver the message to a consumer immediately. We set this to false, so the message will stay in the queue until a consumer is ready. This is the actual message that we're publishing to the queue. If anything goes wrong during the publishing process, we log the error and return a 500 internal server error response. If everything goes well and the message is successfully published, we return an HTTP 200 OK response, confirming that the message was sent to the queue. Now that our producer is ready, let's implement the consumer. First, we'll import AMPQ from the RabbitMQ Go client package. Next, we'll define a constant queue name to refer to the RabbitMQ queue we'll be consuming messages from. This is the same name we used in the producer. Let's define the main function. The first couple of steps are the same as the producer, creating a connection and a channel. Let's copy-paste this code. Now let's subscribe to the queue and start consuming messages. We use channel.consume to bind to the queue. The first argument is the queue name. The consumer parameter allows us to set a consumer tag, which is a unique identifier for this consumer. We're leaving it empty to let RabbitMQ generate one for us automatically. True for automatic message acknowledgement, so RabbitMQ knows we received the message. The exclusive flag determines if this consumer is the only one allowed to consume from the queue.
we're leaving this as false because we might want other consumers to access this queue as well. The no local parameter prevents this consumer from receiving messages it published itself. We're setting this to false because we don't need that behavior in this case. Setting no wait to false means RabbitMQ will wait until this consumer is fully registered before moving forward. Finally, the args parameter allows us to pass additional configuration for the consumer. We're not using it here, so we pass nil. This function returns a channel that streams messages and an error. Let's handle the error. Before we start processing messages, we'll handle system interrupts, like when the user tries to terminate the program. For that, we use a signal channel. Now, we'll enter a loop where we wait for incoming messages or an interrupt signal. In the loop, we use a SELECT statement to either receive messages from RabbitMQ or detect an interrupt. In the first case, we listen to the messages channel, which RabbitMQ pushes messages to. When a message is received, we log its content. In the second case, we listen to SIG channel for system interrupts. When an interrupt signal is detected, we log it and then call OS Exit to gracefully shut down the program. That's it. We've set up a basic RabbitMQ consumer in Go. It listens for messages from the queue and logs them. If an interrupt signal is detected, we cleanly exit the program. Now let's first run the producer. Hunt the Jin server is running on port 8080. Let's send the message using the HTTP GET API. The message is successfully sent. This is the RabbitMQ Management Console. Here we can see the message we posted just now. Now let's run the consumer. Here is the message we sent from the producer. Let's send another message. And this message is also received. Let's have a look at the management console. We can see this graph shows two messages. In the queue, we see it shows the first message as the consumer was not running. Since the consumer was running this time, the message directly went to the consumer without going in the queue. And that's it. You've learned how to use RabbitMQ with go to send and receive messages. This is just the start. There's so much more you can do with RabbitMQ, from handling multiple queues to advanced routing with exchanges. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more awesome Go content. Until next time, happy coding!